Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the lunar version of the Maru Q and that is what you see here. It was originally a lander for Mars but that of course would have to be different from the equivalent lander for the moon. The original Maru Q uh, was very different in its look. It had heat tiles at the bottom and uh, the top was not covered in lunar regolith. Uh, so this is the original Maru Q, lander for Mars. Uh, it also had skis, but I, didn't, I haven't got those on right now. And it also had the little uh, vectoring engines. But the lunar Maru Q named Usagi, uh, which is a uh, Sailor Moon reference, as well as a reference to the rabbit of the moon, uh, which is sort of... Uh, the Chinese, uh, I think, named their rover U2, which is also the same thing. Uh, but the Japanese also have the same concept. Anyway, you can see the lunar regolith I really ought to get rid of that those tags there, but anyway, sort of lunar regolith covering this a little bit. Anyway, so aesthetically it's different, and also without the heat tiles you've got a sort of steel surface that's a little bit battered, and uh, streaks on the back here. I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but you know, good enough, right? Uh, and the other difference is that for Mars we can use methane and oxygen because we can replenish methane and oxygen from the surface of Mars. We can't from the moon, we need to get hydrogen and oxygen, so we're using hydrogen and oxygen with this, hydrogen and oxygen with this, so the thrusters are different. And we need more room because hydrogen is not very dense, so it couldn't fit in the existing tanks. So uh, that's the uh, simulated payload, but we have additional tankage inside here so we can't use the whole bay the way it was with the Maru Q, the original. We've got two sets of tanks here and those contain the hydrogen and oxygen, the extra hydrogen and oxygen that we need. Uh, I mean safety wise, uh, but anyway, uh, you get the, oh that's not, that one is the body not the forward tank. I wanted the forward tank here because I want to demonstrate that uh, with this particular payload, oh, it all went away, great. Uh, this particular payload is seven tons and that's the neutral payload, which means that as we drain all the tanks, uh, the center of mass should not change, hopefully. Let's verify that. But of course, with a different payload, it would, and then we'd have to uh, thrust limit the forward or back engine set in order to counteract that. And so if we drain, drain, Train, train. See, it basically stays the same. So that is the neutral mass that we can have. So if if we could, we would always have that mass in the back, just for safety's sake. But uh, yeah, you know, seven seven point two two seven tons. If only all our payloads were like that. So they can carry that. Uh, down to the surface and when it offloads it, it can get back to orbit by my calculations using the delta V and it and that new that's only a neutral payload though if this is thrown down to 76 by the way uh, if this is all the way up then it's not the neutral payload or we could shift that it would make the same difference if we moved that set of thrusters uh, anyway just a side note so this is Gonna need to be tested around the moon, but really the first thing I want to do is test our ability to deliver it to the moon. It is a bulky sort of thing. Ah, these aren't full. There we go. There we go. 62.6 .6 tons with the payload, 3,575 meters per second. You'll have to use about 2,300 of that for landing. Once it gets the payload out of the bay, you'll have 1,856 left to get back to orbit, so it's pretty tight on that. Um, if it doesn't have any payload, of course, it can get to the surface and back into orbit without any problems, so transferring crew isn't a big deal. And it's conceivable that we could set, uh, well, if we have a third set of tanks, then we don't have any room for payload anyway, so it doesn't matter. The thrusters aren't exactly the most efficient hydrogen-oxygen thrusters ever. After all, as you can very readily see, it they don't have much of a nozzle ratio, so they're not very vacuum optimized the way they are right now, uh, because otherwise they wouldn't fit. So only 300, uh, sorry, 438.2 vacuum ISP. That they're actually decent at sea level <laughs> because of the low nozzle ratio. So yeah, that's on accident though. They 
we don't really care about using them at sea level. But yeah, it is a horizontal lander because I always tip things over around the moon. Uh, on, I mean, not around the moon, on the lunar surface. So I want to be safe during my future exploits and this will be safer. So yeah, it is, uh, it's fairly heavy as far as the structural mass. Uh, I think uh, that's including, that, that number is including the payload. So we're talking about uh, nearly 20 tons, basically. Nearly 20 tons overall. That's its dry mass. So, yeah, it's a hefty sort of thing. But not as hefty as the Mars one, which had the heat tiles and all that business too. Anyway, so let us see about how to launch it. I'm going to try out using the Orion carrier plane with it, but we can't use a reusable upper stage with it because the capacity won't be great enough. So we're using an expendable hydrogen oxygen stage with these uh, SE1040V engines. Uh, these only provide about 360 kilonewtons, but they have a huge nozzle ratio, so they get a uh, very good ISP in vacuum, 463. So that's, I think, the only way that the Orion carrier plane can carry the Maru Q and still allow the Maru Q to transfer itself over to the moon and capture sort of lightly. But will that work? I don't know. So we will see whether we can actually do this whole business with the Maru Q transferring over to the moon. And we've got solar panels and a radiator to control the boil off, hopefully. So that is also added, as well as the seven tons of cargo in the back of the bay there. So we're testing it with that. Without that, of course, we'll have better um, payload, uh, not payload capacity, but delta V margin. But we'll test it with the payload. And that makes it really heavy on this side. So we'll have to see about how well everything is balanced. That's another issue. So with that being the test, let us bring it outside. Well, without the pad structure I originally made for this, I forgot to add that to this. Uh, this looks like it's standing in the middle of nowhere here at uh, Brownsville, but we'll go with it for now. Uh, unfortunately, the pad is like underground. I, I th actually, we can sort of see it there, can't we? See, now there's a pad. We'll, we'll keep to this view. <laughs> okay, SA on throttle is up. Ignition. And launch. Okay, well, now we can't keep to that view. Okay, of course we have to go to a heading of 75 degrees. Maybe we can move Maro Q forward. I forget, it didn't seem like it was so small in the VAB, but... Well, out here it's more apparent how big it is. I don't really know how the Orion carrier plane manages this, this sort of thing sometimes, but it'll be worse once the fuel depletes from the Orion carrier plane. It's mainly relying right now on the fact that it's the heavy part. Up from the fascinating landscape of Boca Chica and Brownsville. Okay, completing the roll around here. And we should get to the requisite 4,000 meters per second that we normally want out of the Orion carrier plane. That's, or close enough anyway. So that's good. Uh, it's getting a little bit imbalanced here. Maybe we can't quite make it. Okay, oh, okay. Well. And that's as much as we're going to get out of the Orion carrier plane right now. Okay, can this do the rest? It's really close. It has a six minute burn time, which is not too much. With four of those engines. I tried putting one and then I tried putting two and it was clear that we needed more. So... It is practically an EUS back here except longer. Well, I better start a fuel cell. I hope the fuel cell... I think I changed them to hydrogen and oxygen cell. So. Well, they were already hydrogen and oxygen for Maru Q. So, they're okay. That'll take some of our fuel, though. The fuel cell is a backup. We've, of course, got the solar panels, but they're not angled at the sun right now. 
So the reason I'm doing this test is this is one of the heaviest payloads I expect that Ryan carrier plane to loft, especially because it has its fuel for the moon already packed in. If it was unfueled, of course, it would be relatively trivial and easy. In fact, we could use the reusable stage in order to launch it. But because we want to get it over to the moon at one go, then we need to, of course, test that out. The margins are really tight. Right now, this stage is not going to get us to orbit on its own. We're going to have to use some of the Maracu's fuel, in which case we saw that it had about 3,550 something. So we need a little bit of fuel to get it to orbit and then 3,100 or so to get it to the moon. That leaves us with very little to finalize the capture around the moon, so the, a lot of things need to work out right, including the radiator to control boil off and all that business. So yeah, that is why we're checking. We can hardly expect a better stage than this considering the ISP of the engines. Unless we go nuclear on it, of course. Well, this stage will be disposed of. Let's prepare some RCS here. Okay, separation. I don't necessarily... Ooh, that's an interesting way for that to separate. Um, I think we only want the rear ones. One thing that's peculiar, we don't have a top point to control from. I should have a docking port so that it can be refueled and everything. And dock with other stuff, so there's that. We're using some pitch authority here. Um, I wonder if tilting the nozzle will help. Um, oh, that worked. That does not work. That's the opposite of what I want. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have to deal with that. So, minor flaw, the placement of the center mass must be um, a little bit higher, I guess? Or, um, well, it's pushing the nose up. So, a little bit lower than expected. Interesting. Okay, well, that'll be good enough for orbit, but now we've got a really tight margin here. And I did not line up with the moon. Ah, uh, we've only got a 7 degree inclination, but we'll do an off-plane transfer to it. Okay, controlling boil off of the radiator. And let's see if we can stop the fuel cell. Um, doesn't look ideal right now. Okay, it is recharging now. If we want to use both sets of thrusters, we're going to have to control from the top. Somehow. <laughs> I mean, I could fudge it, I could just let them go like this and pretend, but but we should test the balance of it and everything. There goes our, all, all our apparent delta V. Yeah, I should have had a docking port on top. Or I wish we could control from that hatch, anyway. Basically, we have to be nose down, I think. But this is hardly going to be efficient. Still a nine minute burn time. Okay, so will this be close enough? Let's see. Uh, vapor and feed lines. I was not expecting that. Oops. Let's see, this way. Okay, now we've got, but uh, no, pitch is not good. Pitch is not good, hold on. Uh, nope, that seems to be too much. Uh, okay, this is all pear-shaped. Ah, we have paper and feed lines again. Well, we're sort of going in a direction. <laughs> Looks like SAS is mildly better at controlling the pitch than Smart ASS. Possibly it's just a matter of adjusting the attitude adjustment thing.
Well, well, we're balanced now. <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes, but I think we wasted quite a lot. Hmm, I don't know. I'm looking at these gauges here, and it looks like the hydrogen is depleting a little bit faster than that oxygen, doesn't it? Did some boil off happen after all? Or do we have the fuel mixture wrong? Or maybe my eyes are deceiving me. Well, in terms of balance, what we once we got the number right here, looks like it's 67, not uh, 70 something. Uh, it looks okay. Oh, so SAS seems to be the better mode here. It's possible that putting the radiator threw things off a little bit. I tried to put it in the center, but maybe it's a little bit off center. And it's relatively heavy. It's about a ton. Okay, well, hold on a sec. That apoapsis is pretty high. I'll bet we were on an off-plane transfer, but that seems higher than I was planning. Hold on a sec. Okay, I think we overdid it. We're going to switch to regular mode and switch this set off. Uh, yeah, we overburned, which sucks because we now do not have enough. Okay. So a few things. We didn't quite get enough juice out of the Orion carrier plane. It started going out of balance a little bit before we got our 4,000 meters per second. And we also didn't have a top node to control from for this. Uh, to get into the loosest possible moon orbit, we could do it with maybe... Wow, actually, it's not too bad. Um, okay, that's not captured. That is captured. 141.7. So we don't need that much more. We seem to have a bit of imbalance here. Let me turn off that and we do have boil off still so yeah stupid that probably reduced the mli layers to 10 again didn't it uh so i'll try and this the forward thing doesn't have mli layers and technically there's still some of the hydrogen and oxygen tanks up here in here in that part so maybe that needs to be covered and we don't have the fuel cell on so that wasn't the one that's draining it Okay, so a few things need to be changed. We'll still keep the seven tons in, but we'll try once again to do this and fix the things that I think need fixing. Okay, so here we go again. I have moved the Maruku, well, Usagi in this case, up a little bit further so that it'll help the balance. I've added a docking port to right there so that we can control from there when we use both sets of thrusters. And I've tried to add the MLI layers, but we'll see about that. So let's see if we can do a better job here. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. Yes, we just need a little bit, and then we can capture, and then it'll need some help after that, of course, in order to get down to a low orbit and be able to land. It'll have to be completely refueled. But the fueling tanker will, well, we'll have to see. It might take a number of trips to get enough fuel over there for one landing. Not ideal. I might want a smaller Maruku. I might want a smaller one of these. This has two decks in the front end. It's a lot of space for peoples. I don't know if we need that much space. We could cut down on that. And then it'll be all easier. Uh, looking good on the relative inclination though. Maybe we'll have to shade a little bit here. I'm sure the Orion carrier plane can handle a little bit of inclination with respect to Cape Canaveral. Okay, let's see how long we can keep this going. We don't need a whole lot of Delta V left for the Orion carrier plane to get back down safely. 100 will do. So yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, separation. In fact, right now that leaves 230 for it. Okay, and ignition. K 
okay and we'll pitch up to get back to the prograde vector there all right looks a little bit better overall when we add up the stage delta v to our orbital velocity right now okay making orbit here on this stage uh we'll try and deorbit well we'll leave it like that so that the orbits it's still got 100 it could have brought us all the way to orbit this time okay separation and ignition of up oh, we need to balance okay that's dangerous <laughs> And ignition. Okay, well, let's say we go with that. Now, let's see what we can do. Well, we have a lower inclination. We'll be going out from over here. Don't know if we want a polar orbit or not. <laughs> uh, a mid course adjustment can fix that. Okay, radiator. Well, it looks like we stopped the boil off. Zero, zero there. So that's good. Now, can we control from here? And... We've got, hopefully, the right balance. Uh, so you're gonna get settled like this? I'm not sure why the fuel isn't getting settled in this direction. Oh, now it is. That took a while, though. So we're off a bit. And we still have vapor and feed lines. Good thing these have multiple ignitions by necessity. I think the fact that we have the orientation like this and the nozzles the way they are throws off the whole business of figuring out whether we have Vapor and feed lines or not. Uh, it's still doing that. Uh, it seems that way. Well, fine. Uh, we are going to go ahead and go... I mean, but then what happens in landing, though? I don't know why it's having a special problem right now. Uh, let me try it again. Maybe if I don't have SAS on... Let's just not have SAS on. Ignition. Yeah, SAS was causing a problem, it looks like. Maybe Smart ASS, if I tune down the attitude adjustment, will be good. Let's see. Let's see the actuation controls. It's using a little bit of pitch. It, oh, whoa, it uses a lot more pitch with Smart ASS. Okay, it, 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 it's not good with this. It's not good with this. It's just not. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Smart ASS does not like it. Try to ease up the pitch usage by adjusting the thrust limiter here. Don't know why it should be different, but it seems that way. It's wiggling about in yaw now too. We don't have. Nope, we don't have that active. Well, oh gosh, we don't have SAS on now. Uh, maybe I should just add some more gimbal to these. I mean, they're vectoring engines in the first place. Hmm, maybe the docking port isn't the best location in the best. I mean, it's not right at the center line. Maybe it's throwing us off a bit. Ah, uh, and then they ignited and then they got vapor and feed lines. That's just great. Oh no, it's rolling. No. Uh, don't need you to do that. So basically we've got control scheme issues here. Yeah, judging from it, I don't think we're going to get enough to make orbit around the moon this time either. We got to orbit with more delta V available, but it's just wiggling around too much while we're controlling from that upper port. So, yeah, 
I'm gonna call it quits here because yeah that's not gonna be enough we'll have about 100 meters per second left which is basically what we had last time so this is an idea in need of more refinement clearly but anyway that's the idea we'll see if we can figure out a way to get the Usagi over to the moon properly and then we'll have to refuel it over there it does still have the seven tons of cargo there I thought that would help the balance but not enough clearly anyway so with that Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.